no doubt about it, our garden isn't producing anything like it did over the summer, but we're still harvesting a lot of crops in late November in Zone 5. This year we had a warm October and November. Our first frost, which usually comes in mid-October, didn't come until mid-November. Today I thought I'd share with you what we've been harvesting in November. I'll start with the crops that we harvested before the first frost, and I'll wrap up with the ones we've harvested after. Early in the month, our romaine and black-seeded Simpson lettuce were just starting to produce bountiful harvests. We also regularly harvested other greens like collards, kale, sorrel, mustards, and chard, while still enjoying summer crops like tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants. At this time, all of our crops were still growing out in the open, without the protection of coal frames, low tunnels, or our hoop house. However, with freezing temperatures in the forecast in mid-November, it was time to harvest the last of our summer crops and to protect some of our cold hardy crops from the cold to extend their growing season. We grew all of our peppers and eggplants in containers in the front yard this year. With freezing temperatures expected, we brought all the pots out back and harvested all the peppers and eggplants. We also harvested the last of our tomatoes from the backyard. Here's a look at our last harvest of summer crops for 2015. We sure will miss having fresh tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants. But we'll start next year's plants in just three and a half months, which will give us something to look forward to. Though we'd love to extend the growing season for all of our cold hardy crops, about two thirds of our garden is in total shade at this time of the year. And covering those crops would do very little good. They wouldn't last very long anyway. So we focus all of our attention on sunny parts of the garden where covering the crops will make a difference. At this point, we hadn't finished our hoop house, but the low tunnels and cold frames inside were ready to go and provided more than enough protection from temps that were just below freezing. We also added a low tunnel to this bed, where among other things, we're growing artichokes and sea kale, which are only hardy to zone six. The low tunnel should allow them to survive our zone five winters. Our first freezing temps didn't have much of an impact on our cold hardy crops, even those in unprotected areas. We continued to harvest a number of crops from unprotected areas, including kale and perpetual spinach, Swiss chard, beets, and celery. Pak choy. And tree collards. Our first frost was the first big game changer in our garden in November. The second one came last weekend. We got several inches of wet, heavy snow that completely buried many of our unprotected crops. I harvested the last of our Swiss chard the morning after the snowfall. I had to dig it out from underneath the snow, but it was still in great shape. Within a matter of days, however, most of the crops in open areas were done for the year. Later in the week for Thanksgiving dinner, I harvested perpetual spinach, Swiss chard, dinosaur kale, Georgia collards, tree collards, mustard greens, French sorrel, red vein sorrel, good king henry, carrots, and radishes. The carrots, radishes, and kale were the last three crops still thriving in open areas, but the rest of the harvest came from either the hoop house or a low tunnel. Please see the description if you'd like to see the complete list of all crops we're still harvesting in late November in Zone 5. In the upcoming months, I hope to continue to bring you harvest videos to give you a better idea of what can be harvested during the fall and winter in Zone 5. Of course, these harvests won't be anything like our summer harvest, and pickings will be pretty slim by January and February, but I think you may be surprised by the results. To close the video, I'll share one last harvest. We keep this small bed covered with storm windows during the cold months to prevent the soil from freezing. This allows us to harvest sunchokes all winter. I'll harvest just enough sunchokes to make one of our favorite sunchoke recipes, sunchoke soup. I'll include a link to the recipe in the description. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time.